All right, <laughs> what we want to show you is how quick somebody be can become encapsulated in grain or soybeans. What's the problem with that? Well, first of all, if you get below your level of your face, you can't breathe anymore. And the other thing, depending on what kind of loose material you're in bulk-wise, that inner uh, it interrupts your ability to breathe. When your chest expands, when you take a, an inhalation, your chest wants to get bigger. When you exhale, it gets smaller. Guess what happens to that material? It pushes tighter against you. So you die by suffocation. The coffer dam is the big yellow panels we'll put in. What, what we have to do is if somebody's encapsulated in that loose material, we have to prevent that material from coming around them again so that their chest doesn't get crushed and they can't breathe anymore. So we get that around them and then we start literally by hand and we have what we call a, a auger as well, run it with a cordless drill. We can take that material out from the inside so they have a safe place. It's like inside of a little tunnel or a culvert if you will, but we've got to be able to get it in there. So if you look, I'll put it going down. Out. He's gone down probably a foot in less than about 20 seconds. So what they're doing is they're taking that uh, coffer dam is what it's called, putting those panels around that patient, and we'll eventually just kind of shift it down to get it so it's down below there. Uh, <coughs> one of the things we have to be concerned about is where are their limbs, in other words, their arms and their legs, because we can't see them. And if we try and dig them out here, it's just gonna keep under caving. So we need to get it around them. So a lot of times, if our patient is conscious, they can tell us. Oh, I can feel it, you've got something right by my foot, those types of things. If they're not unconscious, then we have to obviously take a little bit more caution with that. What Glenn's doing is he's pushing that down, uh, getting it. You can tell it's, it's going down kind of slow. Uh, it's not going to be quick and it's not going to be fast. But it's going to be uh, uh, measured slowly so that we don't hurt or injure our patient. Yeah, it was like so much pressure on your legs and stuff. And then uh, what was it like when um, that you were getting out? Can you describe that, that feeling? It was pretty hard trying to get out. Like you couldn't really move till the, you got to a certain thing. And then when they put that auger in, could you feel? Yeah, I could feel it vibrating. It was kind of scary. So with this um, farming safety, what would you say if somebody was debating whether they should be here or not? Like, are you learning a lot? Oh yeah, I'm learning a lot of safety tips and stuff. And I think it's very helpful. Maybe no. two things that you're learning. So I'm learning? I'm learning uh, like safety on a tractor and how to mount onto a tractor correctly. And about all the gases and stuff in silos. Notice how that auger's going right down. It's walking itself down, but it's bringing the material outside that from around the pavement. Once we get to about mid side, we should be able to get them out. Now, the, the thing is, people say, why don't we just grab a hold of them and lift them out? There's too many pounds per square inch of pressure on their body, and you're going to injure that patient. You go pull them apart. Literally. What can the guy inside do? He can stay as still as possible and calm as possible if they're conscious. And that's easier said than done when you're in that situation. Uh, but that's why we gave him a bucket. He feels he's helping. Every bucket holds one less that he needs to get out from him. And if we have to put a harness on, because we're going to do that first, we would put just a sling underneath their arms and get them so that we don't lose them. Anything I can attach to, but if you don't pull on arms, you have to get around the chest under the arms so you don't pull them apart. So then all we do is pull them apart. So on the inside, there's actually steps that he's stepping up. It's just, we call them steps, but there's nothing more than that of himself. It gives you a foothold, and he was able to get out. Just learning about response time, like how long does it take you to be engulfed in grain, how, how hard it is to get out and the safety features. I would definitely encourage this class because it's just, it's a great safety to learn about what can all go wrong and how to react to different problems that occur on farms. How happy are you, John, that they started this course up again? Oh, I'm, I'm glad, because, especially with the machinery and equipment nowadays, because the stuff we're working with nowadays, I mean, when you're standing next to it, even as adults, it's just amazing 
what we can do with machinery, but good awareness of what that machinery can do, how it's supposed to properly operate, but also the hazards and the safeties associated with it and how can I avoid that and not be part of the problem.